Hello everyone, this is Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. Today we're on the 13th of February, 2024. Today we have Kevin Martins, Kenneth Salerno, Nick Reimann, um, Akash Mistra, welcome. I think that's the first for you. And I think I forgot nobody. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. There we go. And myself, of course. So today, as always, we have one open action item. Uh, we won't talk a lot about Java 21 because Mark won't be able to join today. And I don't think we had lots of news. We'll talk briefly about the release work on agent and controller images. Then we'll see the work in progress on images. And then at the end, we'll talk about a Nick proposal to implement log file generation in plugin installation manager tool as always don't hesitate to interrupt me if you have something to add a question whatever feel free to to interrupt me um let's start with the open action items as always uh we still have to announce in a way or another the end of the blue ocean docker containers or container or containers i think there are several of them uh, which are outdated and it's not really a good idea to use them anymore uh, it's not directly the Blue Ocean um, tool. It's the containers built on top of the um, Blue Ocean um, tool and have a, a replacement in the work, uh, which happens to be, oh, how is it called, by the way? Huh. Uh, pipeline Graph View, I think. It's not all the features of uh, Blue Ocean are there yet, but it's a cool work in progress. Anyhow. Now let's go with the Java 21 support and the 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan. So the goal there is to uh, let the Jenkins community users know how and when they should uh, change their Java version and how will Jenkins propose to support uh, a specific Java version and for how long. So the term uh, mark coined is 2 plus 2 plus, plus 2 and there are links uh, there to uh, the Jenkins enhancement proposal, uh, which is not uh, merged yet. It, there is a long way to go. In fact, as soon as some other people join in the conversation, they bring some new ideas. And yes, it's not finished yet. And a few weeks ago, when we were in FOSDEM Brussels, uh, we had the day before FOSDEM uh, Jenkins Contributor Summit. And of course, people brought some new ideas. Uh, so yes, we're not yet to see the end of it, but that's really interesting. Uh, when we think that I, two years ago, we were still working with Java 8, and now we know that Jenkins works with G GDK 11, 17, and even 21. Uh, yes, uh, these are great time for Jenkins and Java. Now let's switch to the release work on agent and controller images. So we had, of course, two controller weeklies, the 2444 and the 2445, uh, but there were some breaking changes. So if you are using them on a daily basis, please uh, take care. We replaced the Java 21 previews with release version for some of the architectures. I'm, from the top of my mind, I think it was about um, PPC 64 LE and maybe S390X, um, something like that. So Mark Waite worked on that, but also Kenneth, I don't know. Oh, Kenneth, as you're there, uh, can you confirm uh, that I'm not saying bad things about that? So it was Mark, um, focused on the S390X, and I think you proposed the modification for the PPC64 LE. Correct. Correct. Woohoo! <laughs> thank you, Kenneth. So thank you for, for your work, um, by the way. We also removed the ARM v7 for the controllers, um, because, yeah, it's not such a good idea to keep uh, this kind of machine warning uh, Jenkins controller when we know that the Tamarin uh, project won't supply anything newer than JDK 17 uh, in the coming years, except something magically happens and then we are moving to JDK 21, but I don't think it will happen soon. By the way, at FOSDEM, I met some um, Stuart Addison, I think, from uh, the Timurian project, 
who confirmed that it was not scheduled to do something regarding ARM32 and JDK21. So yeah, definitely not a good idea to keep uh, trying to do something with these machine for containers. And frankly, to be honest, there aren't that many machines, ARM32 machines able to run efficiently a Jenkins controller. It works, but it takes so much time. It's almost unusable. So yeah, I'm fine with removing uh, these images. And of course we had a few uh, bumps for the dependencies. So we moved plugin manager to 2.12.15. Uh, we bumped UV8, Debian bookworm Linux with the latest version. As for the Docker agent, we only had one new release, uh, which changes something which uh, won't have any impact on the end user, like for example, the definition of tags in Docker Compose. But there are some modifications that will impact end users, which are not breaking change, but we updated the Java versions and the Debian version, and also the Alpine Linux version to 3.19.1. In Download Agent, it will take a few um, meetings for me to uh, understand <laughs> that it has gone. It has merged with the main uh, agent repo, so it's not updated, and that's perfectly fine. It does not exist anymore. Now for the SSH agent, we had a few version bumps, which led to one new release where we modify the Debian bookworm Linux version and the Alpine Linux version too. We had quite a few uh, work in progress the um, weeks before on images, but there is only one still um, a work in progress. It's only a draft for the time being and no pressure on heavy, not at all, but it's still working on adapting the JDK 11 and 17 manifest for Windows. And in the end, that won't change anything for the end users, that's just internal changes. Um, now, the Docker based quick start tutorials. Before first them, we were able to merge two tutorials uh, about Maven and Python. So it's a rewrite of the original. Um, tutorials which were using Docker in Docker and pretty, yeah, it was difficult to follow, frankly. You had to know Docker um, before starting the tutorial, which is not so cool for first time user of Jenkins. Some people managed to do that, frankly, but that was unnecessary. So we are rewriting one tutorial after another. And the last one, uh, it's not the last one in the list, but the last one we are working on is the one about Node.js and it's progressing, but slowly. Any questions or remarks? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, thank you. Then, Nick, uh, the floor is yours. You proposed on the Gitter channel, I think, um, uh, to implement the log file generation in plugin installation manager tool. So could you please tell us a few words about that? Yes, this is based on a longer conversation I had during the Jenkins Contributor Summit with Mark, who unfortunately isn't here today, as mentioned. Yep. Uh, and I did kind of mention it briefly in Gitter, but there's not a lot of background, so I apologize for that. Um, but uh, what we talked about is the, uh, the potential feature of having something in plugin installation tool to generate a, a log file. So for developers that are familiar uh, with Python um, or NPM, I think these are two language environments that commonly use log files. Uh, I'm primarily a Python developer aside from Groovy and other Jenkins stuff. So in Python land, the tool that we use is called um, pip-tools and specifically pip compile. And what you do is you give it a file called requirements.in that basically says like, all right, here's the packages that I really care about. And typically this file is unversioned. You don't pin any versions in it unless you have some very specific needs. And mm -hmm. then you pass it to pip compile. And then basically the, the job of pip compile is to generate you a huge file that has all the actual requirements to pin versions. And so that means basically the packages that you wanted and their dependencies and their dependencies, dependencies, and so on. So the goal of this is that you have a requirements.txt file that can be used to say, okay, here's all the packages I want at very specific versions. So that when you deploy your software into uh, the wild, you know that it's with a set of 
packages that are tested at specific versions and there's no surprises. Obviously, there's a strong desire to have a, a similar feature within the Jenkins Plugin Installation Manager tool because um, although you can rely on that tool to update your plugins regularly, it has a few disadvantages. Namely, you don't really, uh, it's not always going to be guaranteed that you maintain compatibility. For instance, when a transient dependency gets updated, you're not going to be assured that another top level plugin has that one. Also, if you decide to remove a plugin from your Jenkins installation, then you have to manually hunt down all of its dependencies and make sure that no other plugins depended on them to figure out if they could be removed, uh, which can be a pretty tedious task. And also it means that the, in general, the plugins.yaml file can be quite large because there's lots of dependencies and transient dependencies that need to be accounted for. So uh, at my company, we have a way of working around this and it's not great. It would be definitely desired if the plugin installation manager could generate a lock file on its own. Uh, the way that we do it currently is we have a, a file that we call like plugins-in.yaml and it lists uh, the specific plugins that we actually care about. Um, I can screen share and show you what these yes, files are. Yes, please do so. In. Uh, I'm just going to share a specific window if that's okay. Because I have yeah, of course. A cluttered desktop at the moment. Uh, but you should see my VS Code window, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have an Ansible playbook, which I'll get, I'll come back to in a moment. But here's what our plugins.in file looks like. So it is a YAML file that is valid and can be understood by, um, uh, by JCASC when it starts out. And that ultimate, the goal of our Ansible playbook is to expand that into a file that looks like this. So this contains all of the plugins, all their dependencies. You can see, for example, we want Blue Ocean, um, but we don't specify a specific version. Uh, and then that gets expanded to all of the various Blue Ocean plugins and their dependencies and so on. So when we want to add or remove a plugin from our Jenkins installation, we only do it in this file. When we want to update our plugins, we run this Ansible playbook, which generates the big one. And the, the Ansible playbook, I'm not going to walk you through all the lines because it's not very interesting, but they're, the only really relevant parts are we basically create a Docker container with Jenkins in it, and we tell it to use that incoming YAML file, the, the short one, as its plugin file. We basically have a limited version of our provisioning playbooks and roles here too. Uh, so we have like a full Jenkins version that starts out. Mm -hmm. Then when Jenkins finishes starting up, we literally query the plugin manager's API mm -hmm. to get the JSON file. And then we munch the data around and then we generate the other YAML file. Got it. So um, yeah, as, as mentioned, it, it's a little hacky, but it gets the job done. I mean, we do end up with a list that's pretty canonical and it's also very reliable in the sense that we know that we can trust the dependencies and the plugins that were generated because it was Jenkins that kind of figured it out when it had to download all the transient dependencies during startup. Yeah, I get um, it. Sorry, yeah, go so ahead. the desire is to give the plugin uh, manager tool, basically a command line option where you could feed it the ab abbreviated file, and then it would spit out the long file with all the plugins in their versions. I'm happy to pick up the torch and implement this. Uh, I'm not really sure how, and I'm not really sure where to start looking and what the next steps are. So I was yeah. hoping to get some advice and guidance on that in this meeting. Could kind of okay. Direction. Yeah. Um, I don't know if others will uh, show up uh, and say I can help with that. I'd be delighted to give you a hand uh, with that. I'm not maybe the most skilled one to to do so, but I'd be happy to add it. I think that's a great tool. It remembers me of um, last year Google Summer of Code, where 
you know, it's related to the tutorials I talked earlier about, because for the tutorials, we are using Docker and Docker Compose. And to keep it up to date, we have a GitHub action where we start up a whole Jenkins instance with Docker uh, Compose up. And then we ask it um, to update the list of plugins. You know, we have a definitive list of plugins, but we ask Jenkins, could you please update right. them? And then we ask via Jcask, if I remember well, to output uh, um, a new list of uh, plugins because there have been some updates. And then we use that and create a pull request that automatically tries to change the list of plugins and it will be the next input for the next GitHub action, whatever. But yes, we already have something that takes a Jenkins a plugins.yaml as an input file and gets an updated one. And at the very beginning, we were only using, like your technique, we only listed the um, um, plugins we were really interested in and started with a vanilla um, instance of Jenkins. Um, and then we tried to keep them up to date. But in the end, we had troubles because uh, there were some invisible plugins that uh, had to be updated also because sometimes there is some ca uh, cascading uh, dependencies yeah. and that was frankly a pain in the neck. So that's why we chose to take the whole list of uh, vanilla first install uh, Jenkins and then only add to it the um, plugins we were interested in and then deal with the whole thing. But it looks more or less like your prototype. Um, but yeah, that's cool. So it looks like, um, more or less, I'd like to have something without the use of Docker, if possible. But if that's not oh. possible, then yeah, we'll see. Same here. I think for me, the biggest question about implementation is basically, where does the code live that is kind of resolving all of the plugin dependencies and figuring out, okay, if I have this plugin and it depends on, let's say, Snake YAML, then I need to go get that one and kind of figuring out all of that uh, that tree, because I is I, I kind of am under the impression that that code does not currently exist in the plugin tool. It lives probably somewhere in Jenkins, I would have to guess, and I'm not really sure if it could be brought out of there, refactored to a library, copy pasted. I'm not really sure what the best approach is for that. I don't know. So where do you think the best place to discuss that would be on community.jenkins.io? I'm really not sure. Uh, I was recommended to come to the platform SIG because they yeah, of course. <laughs> told me, I was, uh, I was told that that would be a good starting point of where to discuss it, but it is, it would have been even better if Mark would have made it today, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, he's currently traveling for work. Um, yep. I'm you also thinking to... uh, Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to suggest I can try to arrange uh, another follow-up discussion with Mark and any other interested parties if that would be I am. useful. And uh, I don't know if you saw the presentation from Oleg Nenashev in the latest Jenkins Contributor Summit, but yes. he was talking about Jenkins Runner. I think that's the correct name. And it's a um, Jenkins contained... Yeah. Yeah. You got the, uh, the name right. I'm wondering if we could use that to do that kind of work also or um, not at all. Anyhow, I now understand what you were looking for. I think that totally makes sense and would be a great uh, new feature for Jenkins. Um, yep. Uh, would others have comments or questions about that? Okay, take that for no. <laughs> um, thank you, anyway. Um, oh. So yes, that was uh, the uh, the good place to start the discussion, I guess. And I'd like to create um, subject in community.jenkins.io nonetheless. Uh, and if ever we manage to do another meeting uh, about that, a specific one, not especially a Jenkins platform SIG meeting, but uh, yeah, feel free to propose via Gitter or without uh, within the community Jenkins IO uh, post I'll create later on. And I don't think Mark will be available this week because of work and maybe not uh, the next week and maybe even the week after. I'm not so sure it will be available. So maybe that will just be for <laughs> two of us, but we could start uh, something and then Mark will uh, comment when he comes back. Okay with you? Yeah, so Akash noted in the chat 
that there oh, sorry. was a PR that was open that tried to achieve this. Uh, it's actually not that old. It's from December of last year, and it seems to be kind of stuck in review, though. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Akash. Um... Yeah, thanks. I was unaware of this. I should have checked the list of PRs uh, before. Yeah. Would you mind, I guess, to um, write down the link to the PR so we can reference it into the um, meeting? I can notes. actually drop it in the oh. chat quick because thank I you. Have... Yeah. Cool. Okay. No. No. Ah. Uh, per uh damn it i failed okay I, I will stop messing with that and see what i can do later on to correct it okay let's have a look at this one Ooh. oh yes from last december Okay. Uh, okay, so you still did some reviews about that. Got it. Okay, because for the time being, what you proposed, um, Nick, and what I was thinking of, it was outside of the tool itself. So we have to do it from the inside would be cleaner. Um, yeah, yeah a, a solution yeah, inside yeah. the tool would definitely be preferred. So I guess the question would be, um, Akash, do you need any help with this PR, like either testing it? I mean, at the moment, it looks like it's just waiting for a review, but I mean, it's been reviewed by someone who I'm not sure if this person is a contributor or not. So um, I, I guess the question is, what are the, the next steps to try to get this merged? Uh, I'm still need to add test cases. So I'll, I'll try to add test cases and let you know. Okay. Cool. Yeah, if you need any help with this, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to assist. So Sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Uh Sonic, what is your GitHub handle if uh, Akash want to get in touch? It's NRE dash Ableton. Uh I'll write it in the Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, and I use the same handle on Gitter where you can find me there as well. Um, so that said, I guess that removes the need to uh, write a proposal document or anything of the sort. You're right. Maybe the easiest solution is to just try to help Akash to get this merged. Cool. Thanks a lot, folks. Uh, anything else uh, before we wrap? it up no cool so i um subscribe to the pr and see what we can do all together thanks a lot um we should see each other if you want to come uh two weeks from now uh same place and same time the video should be available from 24 to 48 hours for people not having been able to join so see you two weeks from now thanks a lot bye bye Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.